this class we discuss about the constructional detail and operation of light emitting diode or leds the early years of 1960s witnessed a race in the field of semiconductors led was discovered in the year 1961 by james r bird and gray pitman in 1962 nick holenge a consulting scientist for general electric invented first visible spectrum led at the time the production cost of one led was 200 dollars these leds used a semiconductor combining gallium arsenic and phosphorus this type produced a red light but the efficiency of the device was very low in 1987 the hallard packard produced aluminum gallium arsenide diodes which were bright enough for the first applications within lighting in 1998 aluminum indium gallium phosphide diodes were manufactured by hallard packard which are superior to aluminum gallium arsenide diodes giving double the light output in 1993 HP started to use gallium phosphide to provide high output green LEDs and HP also developed high output orange lamps LED work on the principle of electroluminescence electroluminescence is an optical phenomenon and electrical phenomenon in which a material emits light in response to the passage of an electric current or to a strong electric field now we'll see the constructional detail of led this is a figure of light emitting diode this is diffuse to p type this is epitoxial n type this is gold film cathode connection this shows the charge carrier e combination when led is followed by us it emits light this is a symbol of led this is anode this is cathode this is the vi characteristics of led x axis voltage y axis in milliamps this is infrared this is red this is amber this is green this is blue and this is yellow led is a specialized pn junction diode made up of very thin layer of moderately doped semiconductor material LEDs are made from exotic semiconductor compounds such as gallium arsenide, gallium phosphide, gallium arsenide phosphide, silicon carbide and gallium indium nitride which are mixed together at different ratios to produce a distinct wavelength of colors. Different LED compounds emit light in specific region of the visible light spectrum. and therefore produce different intensity levels the pn junction is surrounded by a transparent hard plastic epoxy resin hemispherical shaped shell which protects led from both vibration and shock the epoxy resin body is constructed in such a way that photons of light emitted are focused upward through the domed top of the led the resin acts like a lens concentrating the amount of light leds are not made with a hemispherical shaped dome for their epoxy cell some leds have rectangular or cylindrical shaped into a bar or like an arrow common colors of leds are red amber yellow and green are highly used as visual indicators and as moving light displays blue and white color leds are more expensive than standard leds This is a constructional detail of a light emitting diode. Under forward bias condition, a light emitting diode emits light due to the recombination of holes and electrons within the device, releasing energy as photons, which are called as photoelectrons. Electrons dissipate in the form of heat for ordinary diodes, but in LED. the electrons dissipate energy by emitting photons the charge carriers recombine in a forward pn junction as the electrons cross from the n region 
and recombine the holes existing in the P region. Free electrons are in the conduction band of energy levels while holes are in the valence energy band. Thus, the energy level of the holes will be lesser than the energy levels of electrons. Some part of the energy must be dissipated in order to recombine electrons and holes. This energy is emitted in the form of a light. The majority of the light is produced from the area of the junction nearer to the p-type region. If the semiconductor is translucent, the junction becomes the source of light as it is emitted thus becoming a light emitting diode. LED will not emit light when it is for reverse bias and at the same time it also gets damaged. This is the operation of light emitting diode. Advantages of light emitting diode. Number one energy efficient source of light for short distances and small areas. Number two, miniature in size and hence light weight. Number three, low voltage and current are enough to drive LED and require only 30 to 60 milliwatts to operate. Number four, durable and shock proof and like glass bulb lamp types. Number five, the response time is very less, only about 10 nanoseconds. Number six, it can withstand shock and vibrations because it is rugged. Number seven, lumens per watt, 28 to 150 depends on environment. Number eight, lamp life, 25,000 to 1 lakh hours, more than 20 years. Number nine, available in 0.01 to 3 watts. Number 10, LEDs long life, rich color and easily controlled features with the integrated electronics offer a scalable lighting solution. Disadvantages of LED Number 1. A slight excess in voltage or current can damage the device. Number 2. Unreliable and outside applications with the great variations in summer, winter temperatures. Number 3. Reduced lumen output over time. Number 4. Much wider bandwidth compared to the laser. Number 5. The temperature affects LED's radiant output power and wavelength. Applications of light emitting diode Number 1. One mobile phone takes two LED backlight sources and six SMD LED key lights. SMD means surface mount diode. As a result, mobile phones create a demand for 3.2 billion LEDs per year. Number 2. Interior usage of automobiles includes indicator lights on dashboard cages, audio status lights, security status lights, and warning signals. Exterior usage includes third brake lights, left and right rear lamps, turn signals, etc. Number 3. The LED screen has become a new display medium for advertising and information. Number 4. Today LEDs have been integrated as warning lights and indicators on most electronic applications. Number 5. LEDs are being used in advertising billboards, illumination of commercial building exteriors, landmark buildings, bridges, roads, town centers, airports, subways, hotels and shopping malls because of numerous advantages they offer. With this, I conclude my lecture. Thanks for listening.